Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be painting another watercolor and I'm going to be painting a little frog sitting on a seashell. I'm starting off by placing masking fluid all over the seashell to place down spots that are going to be highlights later. And I'll also put masking fluid on parts of the frog, but these are going to be parts later that will be darker than normal. And sometimes masking fluid can be useful for that as well if you want to make sure that you know where those regions are going to be. And this illustration is another Netsuke, and Netsuke are little bag toggles or ties that people in Japan used to place at the top of drawstrings to keep the contents of that bag secured. In my last video, I did another piece that was based on a Netsuke, a little mouse sitting on a pumpkin. They're not always animals sitting on objects. Netsuke can come in all sorts of different shapes and carvings and um, different styles, but animals and nature often were common things that would be carved for Netsuke. And this illustration is actually the first one that I drew. It's just the last one that I painted um, when I was researching different Netsuke and thinking about um, exploring these for um, some illustrations. And for this illustration, I'm using almost exclusively my Daniel Smith Primatech paints. These are watercolor paints that are based from mineral pigments or semi-precious um, gemstones or minerals, such as amethysts or um, hematite and they ground down and added in with a pigment binder to be able to create a watercolor paint. But because they're based on these um, semi-precious stones or rocks, they're often glittery or shiny in some way. And I'm also going to enhance that by using a watercolor painting medium from Holbein, the iridescent medium. Unfortunately, those things don't really show up so well on camera, so um, you'd have to see it in person to be able to move it around under light. But you can see um, at least the different uh, shadow techniques and highlights that I'm placing in, as well as now uh, putting in my second layer for the darker tones and where there's going to be regions of shadows to be able to create some depth. I'm using a mixture of colors to achieve that. Um, a lot of it is the amethyst genuine paint and then a number of the browner pigments and some, I think, Payne's Gray and other paints from Holbein as well. I'll probably put a reference photo or insert a reference, the original reference photo in here so you can compare it with what I'm painting towards. But I loved how derpy the frog was in the original carving and the shell is just really um, beautiful and um, a really interesting topic to paint if you've never tried painting shells before. They're extremely um, organic and um, complex at the same time and allow you to explore a whole range of different techniques while you also don't have to be so um, precise if you're worried about sketching things or um, you're wanting to do a quick drawing. You don't have to be painstakingly accurate when you're drawing a shell. As long as you're getting the, the main proportions in place, the main shapes in place, there's a lot of leeway for, um, for variation. And this is my first time painting seashells, and I'm hoping to establish a glossy sort of sheen to it, but I'm also interested in, in trying to establish the um, three-dimensionality of it, and I'm achieving that to some degree by placing the darks into the grooves and trying to follow the contours of the shell. And you also saw me really amping up the contrast for the part where the shell would go inside or where the creature would have been able to cl originally climb inside of the shell. And I was really quite pleased with the effect that I established there. But I thought it all looked a little bit 
uniform, so I decided to put in some yellowish tones into the mix. And I like the the difference or the the change in vibrancy that 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 produced. I often take a lot of risks with color. I think color is a great thing to explore. Um, sometimes it works for my benefit, like with the show here, and sometimes it doesn't, but it's always fun to explore. Um, I guess a case of where it doesn't personally in this piece is later on, I'll think that the frog is just too green and too different from the tones in the shell. And so that's a case of where I decide to step back and try to tone down the color of the frog by adding more of the, the brownish um, ochre tones that are found in the shell and placing it on top of the frog. But for now, I'm still doing the first um, couple of layers of the frog. And so I've got the initial pale bright greens and now I'm going over um, with a darker green and placing in the spots and um, pockets and shadows that are present. And so the frog is quite different from the original Netscape carving where everything was the same color and it was probably um, carved from a piece of wood or ivory or something like that. But I decided to distinguish the frog from the shell more and to have the frog stand out. But like I said, I decided it was standing out a little bit too much and I've toned that down later. The highlights for the shell were also a little bit too bright or most of them were also too bright. So I've just with mostly water, but some pale tones, um, gone over those a little bit now that the masking fluid has been removed as well. And at this stage, it's mostly a matter of working on the details and also the shadow. So I wanted to be able to ground the shell to some degree and the shadow or a shadow always helps to do that. Okay, so here is where you finally can see I'm toning down the greens of the, the frog or toad a little bit and trying to work in some of those more ochre tones and create also some variation within the, the skin or texture of the, the frog. And now moving on to the outlines of the shell to help define it and to make the image stand out. And I've gone for um, some quite angular shapes that are a little bit more illustrative than the actual piece where the curves may have been a little bit um, smoother. But I, I like the, the feeling that it conveys sometimes to have more angular lines. And here you can see some close-up detail of going back to work on the frog a little bit and to enhance the spots. I also um, edged those out or lined out those with a small watercolour brush. And I decided that the shadow was a little bit too plain and the edges were a little bit too crisp as well. So I put in some light purple and blue, um, the amethyst genuine and the other blue genuine Primatech paint and then tried to um, establish the smoother edges for the shadow as well. And that's quite important for most shadows. Um, you usually don't have super crisp edges for shadows. Okay, now I'm just slowly removing the tape. You can see me pulling it away at a slight angle away from the paper. That helps to reduce the chances of the paper tearing. And so that's pretty much it for this illustration. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd love if you could give me a like or if you had any questions about it, um, drop me a comment um, down below and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you may have. See you soon for another art adventure. Bye.